shahideen wa shakirin wa alhamdulillah rabbil alameen most respected ulama my respected elders brothers and sisters in islam assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh we had commenced just a month uh, a week before ramadan al mubarak on the theme of the seven deadly sins which was exemplified in the hadith of the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam it's tanibu al al as sab'ul mubiqat and we went on to discuss the seven deadly sins not only from the perspective of the quran and the sunnah but knowing that it is a common thread in all or many many religious ideologies in terms of what they regard as the seven cardinal sins or the seven deadly sins when we look at it from the perspective of the divine comedy which was written by dante and he has the the what what they call the uh, pur- purgatorio he has the inferno and he has the paradiso the purgatorio meaning barzakh deals with the seven deadly sins and the seven deadly sins as you are aware by now is of lust which is known as luxuria in latin there's gluttony there's wrath there's envy there's uh, anger Uh, there's wrath um which one am i missing out sloth acidia and of course there is pride kibr out of all of them we've discussed all of them alhamdulillah but out of all of them the deadliest of the seven sins in terms of the perversion of the faculties is undoubtedly kibr or pride in all schools of thought in all religions pride is regarded as the deadliest of the seven deadly sins and the reason is very simple simply because it creates a such a perversion in the human mind that it makes human beings feel like god and when human beings begin to feel like god an anti god like state is created in their minds because the moment you feel like god ana rabbukum al a'la i am the lord most high an anti god state of mind is created in you okay now it's interesting that the seven deadly sins as discussed in various ideologies and religions when we look at the holy quran and look at it in the context of quranic history you'll come to realize that the first story or the first historical narration which commences with the history of the three primary um, um, categories of creation starts off with the seven deadly sins and we have three primary forms of creation in the universe one is the angels the second are the species of jinn and the third are the human beings these are the primary um, species of creation and the, in quranic history and the history of creation commences in the holy quran with the story of these three primary species of creation the angels the shaitan the, the shayateen and the jinn and the human beings right and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts off the entire discussion with the crowning of khilafa of vicegerency upon the head of adam ala nabiyyina wa alayhi wasallatu wasallam who from for all intents and purposes from a physical perspective and to a certain degree from a uh, physiological and from a spiritual perspective may be in certain in certain aspects inferior to the other two species and the moment adam alayhi salatu wasalam is chosen as the vice president of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on earth right there is an uproar in the heaven so to speak right the malaika right raise objections to the internal condition of adam alayhi salatu wasalam and iblis representing the the jinn uh, presents arguments in terms of man's uh, shortcomings in terms of his physicality and in terms of his physiology in terms of his creation now when we look at the seven deadly sins it starts off with the deadliest sin usjud li adam brothers kindly keep silent in the back wa id qulna lil malaikati isjudu li adam really I, you know you may think it's odd but if someone is making a noise in the back it affects you right in the front okay allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts off the discussion of the seven deadly sins from the perspective of the deadliest sin when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave a commandment a strict instruction usjud li adam prostrate to adam alayhi salatu wasalam and prostration is one of the greatest signs of humility or greatest expressions of humility what happened ujulla no fasadu illa iblis everybody got into a state of sajda illa iblis istakbar iblis got into a state of arrogance and in a state of pride and wa kana mil kafirin and the moment that feeling of pride entered his heart and he refused to accept the commandment of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah subhanahu wa ta'ala declared him kafir meaning this sin of pride took him out of the favor of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala completely and he wasn't regarded from amongst the muslimin those who submit to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in spite of the fact that he believed in allah as allah 
It still brought him to the point of kufr. Istakbara wa kana min al-kafirin. And what was the reason for his pride? Or what was the reason for his refusal? One was pride, and the second quality that came in amongst the seven deadly sins was envy. He became envious. He said, I was expecting this position. My species were, were to, to have been crowned the, the vice presidents of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on earth. And here, man who is made a khalaqtahu min teen has been given this honor of being the vice president of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on earth. He became envious. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala declared him from amongst the kafirun, wakana min al kafirin. Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala declared him a kafir, then he became angry. And he turns around and says, I swear by your glory that I will lead all of them astray. That was his anger manifest. Look at the history of creation starts off with the seven deadliest sins. Istakbar and became upset. I'll lead all of them astray. Thereafter, he starts his ploy. And then the Holy Quran alludes to all of the other seven deadly sins. Sloth, Asidia, is alluded to when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fanasiya, Adam alayhi salatu salam forgot. And what is sloth, right, is to, to omit those duties and responsibilities that you should be doing. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had advised Adam alayhi salatu salam, Wala taqraba hadhi shajara. But what happens because of what we today as human beings, not for the Nabi, but for human beings, when we get into a state of sloth or Asidia or laziness, we forget to fulfill our commandments towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Asidia and sloth became manifest. And then Allah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, when Iblis deceived them, فَلَمَّا ذَاقَ shajara, And they tasted of the forbidden fruit of the tree. What happened? That, is, that alludes to gluttony. Eat that which you are not supposed to be consuming. right? And taste that which you are not supposed to incline your heart towards. And you know, become... Well, gluttony came into that. And then, but that lahuma so'atuhma. And then their shame became exposed to them, which is the beginning of what we know today as the manifestation of lust. Right? Because Adam alayhi salam was in a state of absolute purity in Jannah. And the one that the one quality that takes you out of the state of purity is called Janaba. Spiritual and physical purity. So lust, badat lahuma sawatuhma, when the shame became exposed. So in the history of the, uh, the first story of the history of creation and the interaction between the three primary species, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala covered all the seven deadliest of the sins. And the first most deadliest sin was that of pride. Pride is manifest on three levels. One is pride for, against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second is pride against the, holy, the, the Anbiya and the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam in particular for the Ummah. And the third one is pride against people. And again, it's in this verse of the Holy Quran. When Iblis refused to obey the commandment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he displayed his pride against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by refusing to accept and acknowledge the direct commandment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and bow his head before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he showed him the second category of pride, which was that he showed disrespect and pride against a Nabi. And the pride against a Nabi was manifest and expressed in the form of pride and arrogance and lack of respect for a Nabi because the sajda was not the sajda of, of ibadah, the sajda was a sajda of ta'zeem. Lack of ta'zeem, lack of respect for a Nabi is the highest manifestation of pride amongst human beings for one another. And the third category of pride is pride against human beings, against people. And uh, Iblis manifests that pride as well because he said, خَلَقْتَنِي مِن نَارِ وَخَلَقْتَهُ مِن تِينَ I've been created from fire and he's been created from dust because he looked at the bashariya, he looked at the humanness of Adam alayhi salatu wasalam and he, he picked on that. And he said, I'm better than him because of my makeup. So all three manifestations of pride were found in Iblis, La'in, Mal'oon. That is why, La'anatullahi ila yawmiddin. That the curse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is on him till the day of Qiyamah. Now let's examine pride against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Pride against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to this, uh, the, 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 the hadith say Qudsi. A hadith say Qudsi is that hadith which the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam narrates with his words, but it is a directly inspired message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Holy Prophet said, Qal Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, al kibriya'u ridai. That ki kibr and pride is my garment. Wal azmatu izari. And majesty is my lower garment. And he said, Faman naza'ani wahidam minhuma qadaftuhu fin nar. And whosoever wishes to snatch and take away those two things from me and attribute it to himself, I will throw him into the fire. One, 
Then the Holy Prophet وسلم, stated, he said, La yadkhulu al-jannah. Man kana fi qalbihi mithqalu dharratim min al-kibr. He said, none of you can enter jannah, even if he has an atom's weight of kibr in him, a mustard seed side. That amount of kibr in you, you jannah is barred for you. So one is that if you assume pride for yourself or majesty and glory for yourself, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that you're standing up against me. So the place for people who stand up against me is the fire of hell. And if you even have a mustard seed amount of it there, you still will be barred from paradise until you go to the spiritual hospital called hell and you have a spiritual bypass and it's taken out of you. And there's no greater baptism than the baptism of fire. You'll understand that. <laughs> That's the reality. That's kibar against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The kibar against Allah is a very easy one. Quran says, Wallahu la yuhibbul mustakbirin. Verily, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not love the people who are arrogant, the people of pride. He doesn't love them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna ladina yastakbirun an ibadati said, Khuluna jahannama dakhirin. Whosoever becomes proud and becomes arrogant and refuses to worship me and refuses to submit me, I will throw him into the fire of hell. Absolutely debased. And all of those kings, all of those oppressors, all of those rulers, all of those tyrants. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when the when the when the qiyamah takes place and the first uh, the, the, the trumpet is blown Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask liman il mulku to whom does sovereignty belong today to whom does it belong we are the kings we are they liman il mulku al yawm lillahi al wahid al qahar Allahu akbar you know wallah we don't understand this deadly sin of pride and and it's it's, it's a thing that consumes many of us Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. Pride against the Holy Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam is, is the cause. Pride against Allah is kufr. Pride against the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasalam becomes the cause of nifaq. Hypocrisy. And sometimes nifaq, the people who are munafiq, are in a, in a lower strata of hell than even the kuffar. A man comes to the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasalam and he's seated in the company of the Prophet, sahih Muslim. He's seated in the company of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wasalam. And he's eating with his left hand. The Holy Prophet, Sahih Muslim, the Prophet of Allah looks at him and he said, Kul bi yaminik. The Prophet said, Eat with your right hand. He told him nicely, Kul bi yaminik. Eat with your right hand. The man looked at the Prophet of Allah وسلم, and he said, La astatir. He said, I can't eat with my right hand. The Holy Prophet وسلم, looked at him and the reason was he said it purely out of pride and arrogance. I refuse to accept the command of the Prophet of Allah. La astatir. He said, I, can, I can't eat with my left hand, with my right hand. The Holy Prophet said, No, mustata'at. The Prophet of Allah said, you will not be able to eat with your right hand. From that day onwards, that man never was able to pick up his hand and put it to his mouth. The Prophet just said, you won't be able to eat. Finish. Khalas. That day onwards, Sahih Muslim, the Prophet he stated, the man never picked up his hand towards his mouth. He couldn't eat after that. Arrogance against the Prophet of Allah. You think that's bad? The Holy Prophet said, Quran says, such humility, such submission, such respect, such, uh, you know, adab in the court of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu is required that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, Ya ayyul ladheena amanu, la tarfa'u aswatakum fawqa sawtin nabi. That don't even raise your voices in the presence of the Holy Prophet Alayhi Sallallahu You may just have raised your voices out of anger or frustration or just having a discussion between your own people, between your brothers, between friends. But you are in the company of the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Although this may not constitute pride in the presence of the Prophet of Allah, but it goes against the adab and the respect that is required in being in the company of the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, if you don't, if you forget and you omit this idea of respect in the company of the presence of Allah, aswatakum fawqa sawtani wa la tajharu lahu bil qawli ka jahri ba'dikum li ba'din. And don't raise your voices and speak and address the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the same tone of voice the way you address one another. Watch your tone of voice as well with the Prophet of Allah. And if you fail to do so, a'malukum. Your good deeds will be cancelled by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you'll have no idea that this one act of disrespect, it wasn't even pride. One act of disrespect for the Holy Prophet cancelled all your guna simply, cancelled all your good deeds simply because you raised your voice in his company. Say that's extremism. Say that's being a bit too harsh. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is trying to give you an idea here. You have no idea how humble you need to be in the august company of the honored messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? Do you know the Sultan, uh, the, the, uh, the, 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 last, or the last of the Sultans of the Ottoman Empire, when they had laid the railway, 
right? Uh, railway sleepers to go from Turkey all the way to Hijaz to Al Madina to Al Munawwara. Right? They had the, it's called the Hijaz Railway. It's still there, by the way, it's still being preserved. The Hijaz Railway, they're not using it, but uh, Hijaz Railway. The conductor, it so happened that the Sultan happened to be in Al Madinat al Munawwara. And they built the railway station at least about five or six kilometers away from Masjid al Nabawi so that the voice and the noise of the railway station and the train mustn't be near Masjid al Nabawi out of respect for this verse of the Holy Quran. That no noise must interfere with the sleeping chamber of the Holy Prophet. Alayhi salatu that's how they kept it so far away. Even the Saudis, I'm going to give them care for one thing. I don't know whether it's a technical matter, but let's give them benefit of Dadi Salaam Right? They built the air conditioning units six kilometers out because of the noise factor. Out of adab for the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Right? So it so happened that the conductor on that occasion happened to ring that, you know, that, I don't know what they call it, that, hmm? Not bell, well, you got two, two, you know, it does that. And the Sultan, who was in Medina, happened to hear it. Stopped. He called the man. He summoned him. He had him whooped. He had him whooped. And he took him out of his job. How dare you do that? How dare you raise the voice of that, that, that train in the August precincts of the Holy Prophet It goes against the respect of the, the court of the Holy Prophet That was the adab of that era. Wallah, we, we've forgotten this adab for Al-Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And it's a manifestation of our pride in our own worship. We think we are independent of the messenger. That today, those people who are known as the, as the Kharijis, one of the defining characteristics of the Kharijis was they became so puffed up, puffed up with their pride by virtue of their worship and their so-called expressions of worship that they, they thought themselves better than the Holy Prophet Sallallahu and they thought themselves better in terms of respect of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu So the one man stood up who was the archetype of the neo Kharijis and he said, Ya Muhammad, ittaqillah. Oh, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, fear Allah. He said to the Prophet of Allah, fear Allah. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Abu Sayyid al-Khudri, when he described him, he described all of those qualities about his external appearance in terms of his so-called religiosity, which was the source of his pride. So we've got to understand and realize. And the third one, obviously, is, is pride between people. We're all human beings, but we have the shaitani you know, tendency in us. I'm better than him. I'm better than him, why? On various levels. But I'm better than him because he's black and I'm white. Right? He's from this geographical location and I'm from that geographical location. My language is more superior than his language. My socioeconomic status is better than his. So what is the difference between you and Iblis? Same mindset. Khalaqtani min nar, as if you were not created from Adam alayhi salatu wasalam. Because your creation, your genetic makeup is, is you know, is, is the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasalam stated, he says, he says, ma bata man abta'a bihi amalu, lam yusri' bihi hasabu. O kama qal alayhi salatu wasalam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasalam stated, whosoever's um, good deeds slow him down in terms of acquiring paradise, his lineage won't take him anywhere. This will take him anyway. Let's go very quickly. There are eight places and eight categories of people who are most, most susceptible and vulnerable to pride. Number one, according to Imam al-Ghazali, Hujjatul Islam Imam al-Ghazali, is the person of knowledge. Let me give you one hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. The Prophet ﷺ said, Man talab al-ilm li yujariya bihi al-ulama. Whosoever seeks knowledge, acquires knowledge to contend there with with the scholars meaning sit there and debate with them or or to argue there with with the sufaha the fools meaning he'll stand there and he says do you know this is what the madhab says. Because he's talking to the fools. He can give them any argument. They, they don't understand that the usul of fiqh. You know what? You don't know whether the prawns are, are makru in one madhab and the prawns are not makru in the other madhab. They, but they, they don't know anything about these things. Oli yumariya bihis sufaha. Argue they with, with fools. And o yasrifa bihi wujuhan nasi ilay. Or a man acquires knowledge. And, uh, and seeks knowledge in order to arrest the attention of people towards him, to attract the attention of people towards him. The Prophet said, Adkhalahu Allahu nar Allah will throw him to the fire. Khalas. <laughs> Ulama should memorize this and, you know, place it onto their chests and, say, by, and to their heads and say, what is this? Is it worth it? 
is all that name, all that fame, all this jidal uh, uh, and all this argumentation and so on. There, when you're just preoccupied with the scholar saying, hey, but he's a great scholar. Hey, he, he walks over everybody. Or the, or the, the sufaha or the fools who say, what a molana, what an alim, what a sheikh. Oh, can you see his arguments? Oh, better still, you know, when the man comes inside there, you know, on internet sensation, Instagram, Twitter, they have the videos all over the place, that they have their marketing teams, they dress to the nines and so on. Oh, yasrifa bihi wujuhan nasi ilayhi. And they'll speak in such a way that they'll inspire the people with their words because they know exactly what people want to hear, not what they need to hear. And they'll attract thousands of people and followers and have 100,000, 200,000, half a million followers on Twitter and Instagram and WhatsApp and whatever it is. Is that all worth it when you're going to hell? Most dangerous place to be standing. Allah protect me, inshallah, ta'ala, and protect all of us. All of them. Wallah, I protect all of them. We are human beings. We are, you know, I'm not a scholar, but you understand what I mean. Right? Imam al Ghazali, Hujjatul Islam, Imam al Ghazali, from whose books I'm quoting to you, he found himself in that condition wherein he was consumed with pride by virtue of his knowledge. In order to remedy that illness and that disease in him, he left his home for 10 years. And because he realized that there was too much of kibir because of his knowledge and because of his name and fame, do you know what he did? He did menial tasks, menial labor. He worked as the, the, as the mujawar, right? He worked as a caretaker or as a janitor, sweeping the, the masjid, the Umayyad masjid. Sweeping the floors. And while he's sweeping the floors of the Umayyad Masjid, like a caretaker and a janitor, the Imams and the ulama in Umayyad Masjid are saying, Qala Shaykh al Islam Imam al Ghazali. They are saying, Shaykh al Islam, Hujjat al Islam al Ghazali says this in his this book. And Ghazali has said this in that book. And Ghazali has said this in this book here. And Ghazali is standing there, he's busy sweeping up. And they don't know it is al Ghazali. Do you know what? Mujahada is required. How much you got to place your nafs under your foot there, not to be taken away by pride? One day when he heard this and he felt a degree of pride in him, he left immediately. He said, because I'm, I'm still vulnerable to this pride here and I felt good about it. So he left that place where people were, were mentioning his books and speaking about his books and so on. In an instant, he stated that they came to the Umayyad Masjid and the ulama were asked a question by a certain man who wanted an answer for a certain matter. None of the ulama could give the answer. And Imam Ghazali became concerned that this person will be misled or he won't get a satisfactory answer. So while he's busy cleaning the mosque there, he came, we called him by, by see, you see, you asked this question here. I think the answer to this is this. So this guy goes, you, you, you give me an answer. And he made a fuss about it in the masjid. And all the ulama are seated there and he said, you give me an answer. The ulama can't give me an answer. What are you doing here? You're a caretaker. I mean, go, go. What you so the ulama said, what answer he gave? And they went on to give the answer. When he gave the answer, the ulama got shocked. They said, hey, who's this? Imam Ghazali literally they say, had to run out of the mosque. He fled the town overnight. Why? Because he didn't want to be afflicted by the disease of pride. It took him 10 years. Read his book, Al Mulqidu Min Ad Dalal. And here, people who, who claim to be Babagatul Manabir, pulpit preachers, want to claim that they're free from pride. The second one, very quickly, we don't have time. Worship. The next thing where people fall is in pride because of worship, where people develop a piety complex and then they develop a God complex. Really. We look down upon people, right? Because of our own acts of ibadat, because of our own nawafil, because of our own dhikr, our Quran. And the Prophet said, this will be one of the signs of the Khadijis. ISIS and so on, they pride themselves on their so-called taqwa and their ibadat and their adherence to Quran and so on. The Prophet said, the Quran, they will recite, recite the Quran, but the Quran won't go down their throats. Sayyidina Huzaifa al-Yaman, sahibu sir the man of secrets of the Holy Prophet alayhi salam, Huzaifa al-Yamani radiallahu ta'ala, who one day led the salah, he made imamat. He's Huzaifa al-Yaman, beloved the, the, the sahabi of the Prophet of Allah. He led the salah, and when he completed his salah, he said, please ask somebody else to make the imam of the salah again. So the people asked him, yeah, imam, why? He said, because in my salah, a, a, a thought entered my heart that right now there was nobody superior to me in the community because of him being a Sahabi. He felt that in his heart, he completed his salah. He said, please repeat the salah again because that salah was full of my own personal pride. I don't want your salah to be destroyed because of my behavior. Do we have that? Look at the humility in that. 
Allahu Akbar. Pride in ibadah. One scholar was sitting, and what a great scholar of Islam. He was sitting in Makkah al Mukarramah, in the Haram of Makkah, and he's busy giving a taqreer. And Imam Hassan al Basri, radiallahu ta'ala, who walked in, and he whispered something in his ear. The man got up, closed his books, and he walked out. The people said, Hassan Basri, what did you do? Our teacher left there. So eventually, the next day, they went and asked the Ustad, well, why did you leave? Hassan al Basri said, Hassan al Basri came to me, and he said, if you are teaching for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then continue doing so. If you are teaching for name and fame and to argue there with the scholars and so on, then it's better you, you leave and you save yourself. The man said, I, I prefer to leave and save myself. Pride in worship. And then we go on to lineage. I just said, Man abta'a bihi amalu, la, la, uh, lam yusri'a bihi hasabu. Today we think, oh, no, no, I'm a siddiqi. I'm from this family. I'm from that family. I've come from this area of the world. I've come from that area from, of the world. You know what? We are far superior to all other people in terms of our lineage, in terms of our, our family tree. You know, we are connected to this people and we are connected to Genghis Khan and Halaku Khan and this and that. And we are Mirzas and we are Afghans and we are Pathans and I, Wallahu Alam. See, I didn't say Kator or anything. <laughs> right? Really, lineage, lineage. Man abta bihi amalu. Whosoever's deeds are not good enough, are not up to mark, his lineage won't bring him anywhere, won't take him anywhere, it won't count for anything in the course of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of lack of time. Another point of pride is beauty. More prevalent in women, but nowadays, today, with the era of metrosexuals and people, you know, buying weird oils and so on, right, it's becoming more prevalent amongst men as well, you know, looking at themselves and so on, right? Beauty. Imam Ghazali gave a beautiful example of that. He said, understand if you really think you are so great and you're so beautiful there, just remember that beauty is only not even skin deep. Yeah, skin deep. It's that much. Because if you were to take off, remove the skin, you look grotesque. Do you know that? All your fibers and you know, your, your muscles, and you look grotesque. And Imam Ghazali gave one more example. He said, if you, you're so proud about your beauty, understand that all that muck coming out from your stomach and your intestine remains in your, in your bowels until you remove it. So up until then, understand that if you are so beautiful on the outside, remember inside you are a walking toilet. I said it nicely. You, <laughs> you are a walking toilet. Imam Ghazali, right? So don't shout at me for nothing. Right? Wealth. Wealth. Need I say more? The Holy Prophet said, Ma dhi'ban ja'i'an the Prophet ﷺ said, too hungry, I gave this to narration to you a few weeks ago, too hungry wolves, so starving wolves, let loose upon a flock of sheep, cause less destruction than the destruction that is caused by a man's desire for wealth and what honor and name and fame does to a man's deen. Power, pride. Power can be physical in terms of strength, right? It can be financial in terms of what you can do with your money. It can be intellectual. You know power on all levels. Power corrupts. And when you see people in power, you will see their arrogant behavior. A, 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 a guy who's very strappy and strong there, he'll walk automatically with his chest out there because no one can mess with him. Right? Similarly, a puny little a pip squeak out there with a little bit of extra power in terms of the amount of money he's got in his back pocket. I will also be walking with arrogant pride out there because you know what? Don't worry about it. There. I got the power of money with me. I got the power of money with me. Right? Otherwise, you, you have the power of evil. Power corrupts. Right? And then his leadership. The last one is leadership. Because of time, I, I didn't want to go into detail with each one, but you've got, you've got the point. Leadership. Right? Leadership and this position of leadership, whether it's spiritual leadership, whether it's political leadership, whether it's social leadership, on all levels, on all levels, it's a problem. It's a problem. What's the solution? What's the solution? The solution comes from the Holy Prophet ﷺ. In terms of all of these qualities, nobody, nobody rivaled the Holy Prophet ﷺ in knowledge. No one comes close to the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi in worship. No one comes close to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi in terms of lineage. No one comes close to the Prophet in terms of beauty. No one comes close to the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi in terms of wealth, in terms of power, in terms of lineage. You said, I said wealth, yeah. Otitu mafatiha khazainil ard. Innama ana qasimun wallahu yu'ati. Allah, I, verily I am the one who distributes and Allah is the one who provides. 
Anyone's got that? The uti to mafatiha khazain hilal. I've been given the keys to the treasury of the heavens and the earth. The Prophet ﷺ stated, Jibreel Amin came down one day. He said, Ya Rasulullah ﷺ, he said, lo, 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 shit. If you wish, right, the Mount Ohad will walk with you turned into gold. Mount Ohad will be turned into gold for you and it will walk with you wherever you go. And you can dispense of the wealth if these people are looking down upon you in wealth. The Holy Prophet Sallallahu said, I don't want that. Rather, I would prefer that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala feeds me one day so that I may be grateful to Him and He keeps me hungry one day so that I may humbly implore Him. Come back to the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The deadliest sin, the, the, the cure for it, is in the Zat of Al-Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wasallam. Allah, right? I just in a small anecdote. A scholar happened to be going past a certain area and he saw a man weeping and crying on a rock, right? And he came up to him. He said, What's wrong? He said, I've been fired. I've lost my job. The man said, What do you mean? Why don't you find another job? He says, No, 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 no. My job's been usurped. So he said, he said, but come on, I'll organize you another job. He said, no, no, do you know who I am? The man said, no, I don't know who you are. He said, I'm Iblis. I'm Shaitan. So he said, how, how you lost your job? He said, ever since the scholars, ever since the worshipful guys, you know, the people of worship, ever since the leaders, even the, ever since the people of power, ever since the people of beauty came into being out there, right? They've created so much of dissension, disunity, discord, problem inside there that I'm out of a job. I'm out of a job. Really, that is the thing. You know, kya hasi aati hai mujko hazrate insan par. You know how man makes me laugh. Fa'le bad khud kare. He does all the evil. Lanat kare shaitan par. And he makes lanat on shaitan. Allah, Allah safeguard us. Right? This kibr, this pride, these seven deadly sins that I've spoken about are critical for, for in terms of us to analyze and see where we are at where we are at in terms of these issues. And you'll find yourself, at one point or the other, guilty as charged. But let us not stop there. Let us not stop there. Let us, you know, take out that burden of our sin and say, Ya Allah, free us from this. Allah give us the tawfiq and insha'Allah.